okay. and welcome back to Voices of the West. Today we are being joined by Manuela Schneider, one of our new new signees to DSP. Welcome aboard. Thank you. I'm honored that you are having me today. Our pleasure. You are at multiple awards going on to things. You are a screenwriter. You are a producer. You are a whole herd of things. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got here. Well, I have always been fascinated by the West, you know, watching Gunsmoke, watching Bonanza, watching Little House on the Prairie. We had all those shows when I was a child in Germany, and they still show them on German TV. Um, but I lost track um, because I worked Far East for quite a few years and took my first round trip in 96 to the U.S. to the Southwest. Yeah. And I have seen tropical paradises, but something about the Southwest. I touched down in Arizona, set foot on the Sonoran Desert soil, and boom, I was hooked. <laughs> <laughs> so one year later, I booked another vacation, a uh, typical dude ranch vacation about 10 miles out of Tombstone. Okay. And I was confronted with the history there. I mean, there was no escape. Um, it wasn't even that much the history of Tombstone itself, but I was very much into the Chiricahua Apaches. I was fascinated with characters like Geronimo, Victorio, Cochise, because I grew up, my first books I read was Karl May, and boy was I pissed when I found out the dude made up everything and he has never been to the U.S. I was disappointed. So I started to buy nonfiction books about the American natives at age 10. So I wanted to know the truth and I wanted to find out more. And then the first place was the round trip. The second place was Tombstone with the entire Cochise County and that rich, rich, rich history. And um, on that dude ranch, I met a very dear person, an old rugged, stubborn cowboy sperm maker named Jim Barker. And out of that vacation, we hit off a 23 years amazing friendship. Uh, he was one of the best friends I ever had in life. And sadly, he passed away on cancer. But I intended to honor our friendship and the way it developed by writing down the story. And I did. And I won a publishing contest. And I won my first little publishing contract. And I took it from there. And I got addicted. It never let it never let go of me. And I think I found my what the Apaches called my happy place, something that makes my heart sing. And uh that's how I got into being an author. Um, I published short stories of different genres before in Germany and Switzerland, but that's what got me into Western. But it didn't take me long, and I realized that, boy, this is a damn hard business. <laughs> you, you have more setbacks than go forward, you know? And um, I realized that it doesn't hurt to have different irons in the embers. It has. It doesn't hurt to have different irons in the fire, because if one doesn't catch fire, the other might might would catch fire. And um, I was finally signed up with uh, quite a well known publisher, but sadly he concentrates more on on the bestseller authors, and he didn't have time to build this little German rookie with the crooked grammar up, you know. So I was like not getting anywhere. And I got caught in a situation that I was seriously considering quitting. And um, it took me weeks to think about it. Am I going to quit? Am I not going to quit? And thinking of my friends who supported me, thinking that I would disappoint the people who mean the world to me and that I would disappoint my own dream and eventually betray God because somebody must have given me a certain amount of talent, um, stopped me from quitting. But now I was in the situation that I 
haven't had anything published for from my last book until the next book coming out in November, it will be a two, two and a half years break. So I thought like, gee, mini, what am I going to do? Readers will forget this Schneider name out of view, out of sight to make it worse. You are living six and a half thousand miles away from Arizona. You have a freaking bug called COVID that prohibited me two years in a row to fly over. So I was, I was in a mess. And I thought like, what am I going to do to prevent people from forgetting my name? And the thing about creativity, if you dare to open those channels for creativity in you, you're not limited to writing screenplays or books or some people paint pictures or are actors. If you look at creative people, most of them have more than one certain creativity Absolutely. talent. So I thought like, hey, I want to write a song because I'm very, very into music. And I reached out to um, another member of Western Writers of America, a recording artist named Carol Markstrom, who has won numerous awards. So I said, Carol, I want to write a song. She said, well, why not? About what? Romance, cowboy, love, blah, 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 uh, fixing fences. I said, no, about the minors. She said, why about the minors? I said, well, you know, me being in Tombstone, everybody knows that movie, which is a brilliant movie. Uh, everybody can see the quotes of Doc Holliday and uh, <laughs> White Herb, and you don't hear anything else day and night, seven days a week. And I said, like, hey, and I did some research for a book I wrote. It's called uh, The Prospector Stream. It's a classic Western, tragic love story. Um, and I came across the fact, what hardship those fellows in the mines really faced. It was shocking. Uh, dying of consumption. It's not really consumption. In Tombstone, you have a certain mineral in the soil that settles in the lungs. And with the liquid in the lungs, it literally turns into concrete. And they are suffocating slowly, agonizing way of suffocating from down the lungs all the way out. Those who process the silver um, on the surface, they thought they are better off and they had the shittier cut because they processed the silver using mercury, which oh, turns your time. brain into a mushy Swiss cheese. I mean, they lost <laughs> it. They lost it completely. And I thought like, hey, if you see towns like Tombstone, Deadwood, oh God, Virginia City, even Bowie, if not for the miners of the Silver Rush or the Gold Rush, copper miners, all these towns would not be a dot on the map. And it struck me rather unfair. It struck me unfair that these people do not get the praise. It's all about White Herb, Doc Holliday, Johnny Ringo, Bad Masters, and those dudes would have never set a foot into town if the town didn't promise money, which was promised because of those fellows chiseling away 12 hours a day. Hey, that's a rhyme. So <laughs> I thought I want to I want to give them a praise. Um I want to give them a voice to show them they are not forgotten. They didn't die in vain because they found that a big part of the USA as we know it today. Oh, absolutely. Every every little town became a boom town and that became the center of commerce and actually train yeah. hubs for everything. Yeah. So we co-wrote the song. Um, Carol taught me a lot about, you know, how to how to mend the lyrics, how to simplify the lyrics. Um, and she composed the melody and she was just finishing recording a new album. She said, like, oh, wow. I kind of like that song. The more I play, it, the more I try it. I like this song. I'm going to record it additionally on that new album, which was a big honor for me. Boy, we were not prepared because the song started taking off. It was suddenly it was played in the US, in Canada, in North Italy, 
in Holland. Now, Holland is flat as a sandwich board, and I don't know why they are into mining because they don't really have mines, but they love the song. It won Best Female Folk Song in Holland last year. Hmm. Don't ask me how we achieved that, but we did. And then it got played in England, in Australia, because the Australian people, they can identify with miners because they have mines. So I said, like, Carol, Carol, we, we, we need a music video. We cannot have this song without visualizing it for the people. I don't know about videos. I know about music. I said, well, OK, I have a lot of Korean acting friends and indie movie producing friends, so I'll reach out to them. Wrote a script for a music video. Then I thought, unfair. Uh, I have many talented friends who can actually act. I have to rewrite the script and create a short movie hybrid music video to grant them the chance to speak a line or two. So we did that. I flew over. We shot the entire footage in 14 hours on the freaking cold days with like 50 degrees. Um, and we had a brilliant guy behind the camera who also edited he was responsible for editing and the cut of the footage. And I say, I want to give the people a chance to be seen in the theater. So we invested some money and submitted the movie into certain film festivals. And I didn't take the Jungle Camp Festival in some God knows where island. I tried to tackle the more difficult ones like San Diego, New York Indie Movie Film Festival. Barcelona, Holland, um, Arizona, of course, LA. And boy, we were not the least prepared for what was happening then. We won award after award after award. And I, I emphasize, we won. People ask me, what does it feel like you win th these awards? No, I, I didn't win them. We won them. If I win an award for a book, wouldn't be possible without editor, publisher, museums, libraries that grant me with the information to win awards with movie. I mean, without the actors, nobody in front of camera, I wouldn't know how to deal with the camera. So behind the camera, uh, without Carol, the song wouldn't be in existence. Um, so I'm, I'm very, very grateful to all these people. Because who would I be without none of these people? I wouldn't, nobody would know my name. So it's every award I achieve, I have to share it, you know, with the people standing behind it and rooting for it. So the latest is that we are nominated as finalists for the Will Rogers Medallion in Fort Worth in Texas with the short movie which is a tremendous honor for me, tremendous honor. Absolutely. And it got me back onto the track of writing books because suddenly I had two publishers who signed me up, one of them, Dusty Saddles. And, um, I'm, I'm truly, I'm so honored. I cannot express it neither in English nor in German, how honored I feel. Um, and I have the highest respect for the United States because I had to fly across a pond to live my personal version of the American dream. And for me, I would have never dreamt if somebody told me before 2017, when I started with the first book, uh, somebody would have told me all that and I'd be like, you are batshit crazy to tell a tale like that. Never, 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 ever. <laughs> Nevertheless, here I am. Mm -hmm. Man, falling in love with the Southwest and just the desert mm -hmm. down there is just amazing in general. I've, I've been out there dozens of times and I, yeah, you can't get enough of it. Well, I recall when I when I saw the Grand Canyon the first time was in 96. We arrived in the late afternoon. I dropped my suitcase in the room and I we were right at the rim. Nice. So I left the hotel uh, room and I walked to the rim to watch the sunset. And I recall I was seated there 
and I cried. And people looked at me like, is everything all right with you? And I said, like, just look at that. We, we think we are dust corns. Boy, we are not even dust corns. And you look at the site like the Grand Canyon, this is eternity. This is God's creation. I think that was one of the times um, you just feel close to God when you see nature creating something that is for us ungrabbable in our very limited mind. Mm -hmm. And um, you cannot even dare to think about how much of this creation we have destroyed already. But when I'm when I'm in Arizona and I have seen most beautiful spots i mean like we live in a beautiful area we are just like four hours from italy which is a super nice country but um the southwest grounds you it kind of like balances you not to take yourself too important but to take the entire world and god's creation which is important which sends very much of our thoughts and we need to realize that again Absolutely. and i think that that is what people say the western is dead because they touch it with the eyes of hollywood if hollywood doesn't produce a certain genre anymore it's dead it's done it's not for me for me as a german western stands for values dignity morals freedom, working hard for the hope of a better tomorrow, wide, fast land, endless sceneries, you know, I mean, like, we, we as Germans, we are not used, you can drive four or five days without seeing crowded towns or cities, you know, so I think those values and the respect for each other, and as I say, dignity and honor, all these values, in my opinion, the Western stands perfectly for those values. And nobody can tell me that Western is there because if we need those values at one time on this planet, among our mankind, it's now, because this planet has turned into a pretty nasty place um due to us but i believe that western stories if they are um, adjust to nowadays thinking can actually teach those values mm -hmm. and if people understand those values again i do actually i'm a writer i can imagine any anything and everything but i do believe that this world will become a better place I'm 100% sure. And um, we need to teach our youngsters that, boy, history cannot be undone. <laughs> if that would be possible, me as a German, I would wish so, because we are getting bashed into the trash for 70 years plus, plus for one lousy politician who created an unbelievable hell for some people but we cannot undo history but we might as well learn from it and to learn lessons we need history so i'm i consider myself very honored to be a person capable of keeping some history alive and i'm among you know if i watch um the list of authors which some publishers have signed up, and especially Dusty Saddles has an impressive portfolio of authors. I'm just like speechless to be among such fine company. As a foreigner, it's not even my mother tongue. I write in English, but it's not even my mother tongue, and I probably give hell to my editors from time to time. <laughs> I bet like they're like, ah, ah, <laughs> you know, wrong tense. Um, so people ask me, why don't you write them in German? It would be easier. Yeah, it would be easier. Um, but the history happened at places where they spoke English. And I tried to reach the readers um, in overseas. 
I tried to achieve something in that country where I found my soul home. Matter of fact, it doesn't matter if I have a German passport, my soul home is in the United States. No country is without flaws, but for me, it has become the home of my soul and heart. So the least, the least I can do, the least, is to have the respect and learn and use the language of that country. Even if it's the harder road for me, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. It's, it's a matter of honor because I feel honored to have been granted that chance. But it is a lot of work. It's a pain in the butt sometimes. <laughs> But I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Excellent. Well, we're very excited to have you along. And uh, what, Thank what you. are you working on presently that's coming out in November? Um, in November, a book will be published called Spirit Horse. Uh, Spirit Horse is a different kind of, it's not a Western, it's a modern ranch story. It um, contains modern Western. themes like <laughs> rodeo. Rodeo is a big part. Um, American Native history is a big part. And American Native legend. And the two main characters is, uh, are a broken rodeo champ who turned to be an alcoholic, addictive person. Uh, because he, he, he breaks after a terrible accident at a rodeo. And the second character is a stallion called Lightning, a rodeo champion that got severely abused. Neither one is trusting people anymore. Neither one has hope for tomorrow, but they need to find each other to heal each other. That is what the book is about. It's, it's a journey, it's a journey. Then in March, I have another book coming out called um, Canyon of the Old Ones, which is a Chiricahua Apache modern mystery, but with some of the Chiricahua Apache history included. And I was lucky because I have a author friend who has done nothing else but um, researching 14, 15 years Apache history. A very successful author, and um, I was I was very honored when he was my beta reader. Um, he pointed out the historical mistakes. Then I have a series coming out with Dusty Saddles, and the first book will very likely be published in twenty three. So I will have two to three new books in 23 and at least four new books being published in 24, which is amazing for me because I'm catching up on the two and a half years slack. Boom. <laughs> yeah, you're making time. up for all the time you sat there not writing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Shooting movies. Um, that series is a new concept I had in my mind, and I reached out to Nick Whale about it, and he was totally intrigued by it. And it's a surprising genre mix, because I believe we can keep the genre very much alive if we mix certain genres. And it's aiming at young adults it's aiming at female readers and it's aiming at a um, totally different group of readers that does not necessarily have western on their screen excellent and that is the idea to draw different people into it and um the the topic is something that has found a a lot of interest lately the past two three years so i reached out to dusty saddles and to nick whale about it and he's like oh my god that is our genre mix that is that is the thing that will catch others and the books are going to be not as thick as a normal novel, but we are uh, starting off with six different ones. Um, it's going to be a series. And um, if it works out the way we think it will, um, or hope we will, we can um, 
we can add two, three, four, five more books of it. And I'm very, very thrilled about it because that is a kind of series I have been kind of like winking my eye at <laughs> for the past two, three years. And um, I have written two two books that are a genre mix and they are, they are quite well liked, you know, people like it. So... Uh, Especially in my last book, like Arma del Diablo, The Cult of uh, Destiny, is not a classical Western. It starts as a classical Western, but the main character is a weapon expert, and the other main character is a cult 45. That time travels, literally. And the book ends in 2021. It starts in 1882 with the suicide of Johnny Ringo. And funny part was when when we published it, five days after publishing it, I get a message on Facebook from one of the readers, Manuela, that very gun got sold last night in an auction. Finally, the private, I mean, like I use true characters, that gun really exists, true characters, true buildings, true events, because I write historical fiction. And I research it a lot. And um, he said that very gun got sold last night in the same auction where they sold the gun that killed Billy the Kid. So Johnny Ringo's cult was sold in that auction for $236,000 plus. And I thought like brilliant promotion <laughs> five oh, days after my book. <laughs> and Have I you been able to reach out to the it. buyer? Uh, no. Get him one of your books. <laughs> no, uh, I will. I will actually. I have a good friend who is a walking encyclopedia on on historical weapons and pioneer correct clothing, and he produces movie. He was um, the guy Texas Check in Tombstone, and his oh, yes. name is Peter Shereko. So yes. Peter, I said Peter, is that gun still existing? Damn sure, that's the model. That's the serial number. You need a picture of it. He knew everything, and I have my main character. But I had to make sure that I'm not talking because as a German girl, I know guns. I love Winchesters. I know how to shoot. But in Germany, generally, you don't have an entire room full of guns like we have in the U.S. You know, sometimes it would come handy, especially when you do taxes. But yes. we're not allowed to have that many guns. So I, I had to make sure that I'm not talking bullshit when I write when I write the story, because it backfires. It backfires if you do, you know. So I was lucky and I try I try to find out about the buyer and um, I'm hoping eventually I'm gonna be able to hand over a book to that guy. Yeah, indeed. We just kind of hit it up on social media until we somebody finds somebody that actually knows yeah. about it and then- yeah. That would, that would be great. That would be great. That would be outstanding. Just you yeah. for a photo op of here's yeah. the book. Here's the because gun. I I visit Johnny Ringo's grave at least every two three years, and um, he's buried where he he got shot. I I don't completely believe the suicide theory, and it's it's still a big discussion nowadays. But I hold the tradition high because I don't drink. But I always take a very little sip of whiskey, which kind of like makes me cough and gasp for air. And I toss the remaining bottle on the grave because it's it's a tradition in Arizona. You always bring a shot mm -hmm. of whiskey to Johnny Ringo's grave. He was he was an alcoholic anyway, you know. So, but uh, that's that's one of the traditions I hold very dearly. Excellent. Now, where can readers find out more about you? Um, manuelaschneider.com, then my author profile on Amazon, social media, Facebook, Manuela Schneider, or author Manuela Schneider on Instagram. Um, I'm a member of Women Writing the West, a member of Western Writers of America. So I'm also at book fairs like in Tucson, Arizona, which is quite huge, or different book signings. I try to update the events coming. Uh, I will be back in the US in October, if God grants, because uh, 
The thing is, I, I take care of my mom who is dying of cancer. And people ask me, how, how come you can work that much? It keeps me sane. It distracts, it distracts me from the biggest hardship in my life at present, watching my mother die. But uh, I promised her, she, she is a very ex, successful ex-manager, hard, hard-headed as you can be. And, but she was the one who taught me not to quit, not to give up, um, to show backbone. And I want to do her proud. So I will be in the U.S. in October and possibly also organize some book signings. And I will post it all on Facebook. So the easiest way is to follow me on social media or to check out Manuela Schneider on Amazon. And um, my books will be republished, um, revised, republished with new covers because I changed, I switched the um, publishing companies. But uh, we aim at having 17 books out by 2025. And that's a big challenge. But right now, we are right on track to achieve that. And that's going to be, for me, record-breaking, you know. But I see people who have written 100 Westerns, like Alfred Wellum, who you, whom you're going to meet tomorrow. I mean, people just, once, once you have stories to tell, you want to tell them. And um, once you get into the flow, everything is possible. Like they say, the sky is the limit. So people start reading, can, and they want to read all of it. Yeah. So my readers can expect I signed contracts for 12 new books within the next 16, 17 months. And I'm thrilled about it. I don't, I don't fear it. Uh, I'm thrilled about it because I had this interruption, this break, and which I disliked. And I'm ready to go. I'm ready to reach for it. Outstanding. Well, we are looking forward to that. It's going to be a huge year for you, and we look forward to seeing where all it's going to be going on that. Um, year, two Thank years, you. three years, you got quite a bit going to the future there. And we appreciate taking the time to be interviewed today. Thank you. I appreciate being here, and I'm very honored that you took the time and that you had me on your interviews. I watched a lot of them. I was uh, very intrigued by the interview with Ken Farmer. That that was very inspiring. And uh, um, <laughs> Darren, uh, whom I also admire, and Mr. Hotsman, you know. Uh, so I, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. I'm I'm at all. I mean, these these are my role models. Excellent. You know? Well, we appreciate you now joining it for other people to come and watch and make you Thank a role you. model of them. <laughs> <laughs> I love to inspire people, and if I can reach people, that's the biggest biggest thing for me, you know, or or get people on the go, like Alfred Wellen, you know. Um, it's about time that he is um, on the international stage, and I was I was very thrilled. Um, I think even happier than himself to be able to help him come across the pond. Well, we'll be having his interview coming up very shortly here. So that'll get checked on there and people can learn Looking. more about him or more about yeah. you. And thank you. All the great things that are going on here for Dusty Saddle in the next coming years. So it's again, amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank yeah. you again. Definitely appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Kevin. And I hope you and all the other authors and our readers have a wonderful, blessed rest of the week. You as well.